These past few weeks, President Obama has been reaching out to Republicans in the hopes of finding some common ground to solve the fiscal problems facing our country. Phone calls, a dinner, it's all part of the president's plan to build a common sense caucus. It would be a remarkable accomplishment if Democrats and Republicans were actually able to find some common ground, because lately when it comes to the economy, the right and the left have only been able to agree on one thing. The sequester, a stupid Washington word. This is stupid. It's how stupid these cuts are. Stupid economically. We should not make stupid cuts. This is a stupid name for a stupid thing. Stupid idea. It's stupid. Really stupid. Very stupid. Really stupid. This was designed to be stupid. Yes, most people agree the forced spending cuts of sequestration were a pretty stupid thing to do. But if it was really so stupid, why did they allow it to happen in the first place? America's brand new Secretary of State, John Kerry, has one idea. The reason is that's freedom, freedom of speech. In America, you have a right to be stupid. Yep. According to John Kerry, stupidity is the right of every man, woman, and child in America. It's an interesting argument. But is the stupidity our lawmakers have shown recently really just been an exercise in patriotism? I mean, just because we can be stupid doesn't mean we have to be. What do you think, Bobby Jindal? You gotta stop being the stupid party. Bobby Jindal seems to think our elected officials should quit being stupid. But it's almost like they can't help it, as if there's something inside them compelling them to be stupid. Gerald Crabtree argues that humans peaked as hunter-gatherers who survived by their wit and continue to get dumber with each new generation. Professor Crabtree has put forward the idea that human intelligence actually peaked several thousand years ago, and from then on, a series of genetic mutations have led to our decline in our intellectual and emotional abilities, making us dumber and dumber with every generation. But there is a glimmer of hope. Crabtree is confident that we're getting dumber slowly enough that breakthroughs in science and technology will fix the problem before it's too late. Which would be great news if not for one thing. One of the deepest four spending cuts made recently was a $1.6 billion to the National Institutes of Health, America's largest supporter of biomedical and health-related research. So I guess we're just going to keep getting stupid. I have to admit, that kind of smarts. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Outfront Web Extra. Visit us online at www.cnn.com/outfront. Follow me on Twitter at falalicnn. See you next time.